Everybody, welcome back. This is the NW Sports. Yes, Cast, sir. Your home for Seattle Mariners news, good news, and of course today's news, the bad news. The Mariners suck. Okay, you might look at their record. Oh, we're 21 and 23. Look at us. No, that record. Don't even pay attention. To yeah, that. we should be way worse than that. The run differential. I don't even want to know what it is because yeah. I know it is way worse than 21 and 23 represents. 21 and 23 represents that you are, you know, you're you're in a 500 mindset. Um, you still have a chance for the playoffs, and right now my playoff chances are below 5%. I do think there are chances for Kelnick, and maybe if for some reason Evan White figures something out, and if Kyle Lewis gets back to rookie of the year shape, and if Mitch Hanniger continues to play well, and then Marco Gonzalez comes back, if a lot of those things come together, then there is a chance for something to get happening, you know, in uh, late July and then heading into August, but right now it's not looking good. No, it's not. And uh, so just to give you guys a brief rundown, if you've been paying attention, and I don't blame you if you haven't been paying attention because there's not much to pay attention to. So the Mariners already heading into last week, we don't have uh, Jake Fairley, who's already injured. We don't have, of course, second baseman Shed Long, who's on the 60-day injury list. So we're already two Where men he down. Hurt? He got hurt in spring training. Yeah. So and then this year. last week, we also then lose Ty France, Evan White, and Dylan Moore, all of them going to injury. So Ty France of, being the biggest one. Ty France is really really strong utility. Ty France guys until there. his yeah. until his fifteen game um, until until, until his, his like fifteen game war, like streak, yeah, yeah. until his hitless streak, he was he was, doing good, he was yeah. hitting like three thirty or something like that. He was really the reason that I think the first month of the year people didn't really look at our at our yeah. offense as the big problem. Um, I mean, they look at it as a problem, but not like a reason why we should be one of the worst teams in baseball. Now, just literally the only reason we're not hitting below like 160 is because of Mitch Hanniger. And you know, who else is hitting above 200? Um, well, Seeger is and J.P. Crawford is, and I think that's those just those three are. Uh, yeah, it, it's been rough. If you're a Mariners fan, I think this is definitely better than – like having a team of mostly 30 year olds and this happening you yeah. know we know that I, mean, I really do think Jared Kelnick is too good to continue to have this happen to him I think Ty France is going to come back I think he's a super super um, productive guy he, he, he really really surprised me and I think he'll get back to shape and then you have guys like Evan White and I don't know about Evan White but you got to assume because that of eventually his defense, yeah. he's going to stick around and you got to assume eventually he'll figure out something, you know? Yeah. I mean, he should improve. But what they should do is put him right here. We're at, we're at the Rainiers game right now, guys. What they should do is put yeah. him right here. Because the Rainiers are crushing these pitchers, and these are not good players on the Rainiers team. I mean, Jansen, Woody, unfortunately, the Rainiers team is pretty much a bunch of guys who have just filled in for other guys who are now on the Mariners. Because the Mariners, yeah, I mean, we have also sent down Taylor Trammell and Luis Torrens. They're both playing here in the Rainiers, and they're actually doing really well. Trammell has been popping off on the Rainiers, so hopefully... This is a good sign for him because when he was on the Mariners, it was not yeah. pretty. No, it was not. The first week was kind of promising. He did hit yeah. a homer in his, what, second game of the year? I think it was third, yeah. Third. And then I think he was hitting about, what, 280 for the first couple weeks of the year, maybe. And then it kind of fell 230, off. 230, 240. Yeah. And then he ended up hitting like 150. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, get Trammell going down here. And then uh, we've also designated Jose Marmaleo's first yeah, sign there. So maybe Marmaleo's will also end up in Tacoma. Maybe he will get claimed. I seem to think he probably won't. Do you and think he gets claimed? Well, even if he even if he doesn't claim, I don't think it's a big loss. To no, be it really honest. isn't. I think that you know he's a guy that really take him leave him. Um, yeah. I would have rather had Lopes, Tim Lopes, than Marmaleos personally. Yeah, and the fact that we let Lopes walk to the Brewers seems it's like a dumb decision now that we have guys like Jack Mayfield and Eric Campbell. And on it's the not like Tim Lopes was hitting 180 last year. No, no, he, he actually was, had a like a breakout right. year, quote yeah. unquote. He was hitting what, probably 260 along Two, those. 260 with about like eight or nine doubles and a yeah. couple of Yeah, I mean, I think that's better than what these guys are doing right yeah. now. Um, and before we get, before we end this, Levi, give me your your thoughts of Jared Kelnick right now. Um, well, I think we definitely. It looks now. It looks like we rushed him to the majors. So I mean, uh, and I think he's a guy who he really wants to to be successful, and he really has the skills to be successful. Uh, he has the work ethic to be successful. Unfortunately, right now, he's just too eager. Every time he comes to the plate, he swings at the first pitch. I mean, whether or not it's a good pitch, he swings at it, and then a lot of the time it goes right to the second baseman or to the first baseman or to the pitcher. Uh, hard balls, hard hit balls, but... Over 100 mile per hour, he yeah. exit velo. He's hitting, um, he's hitting ground balls that most guys would, would be home runs, but just because he's, right, he's not hitting the right pitches. He's hitting, the, he's hitting balls that are outside the plate, 
and he's swinging too quick, so he's always hitting him to the right side of the infield, which unfortunately that's almost a guaranteed out. Yeah, my problem, my thoughts on Kalnick is I'm not concerned yet because yeah, he's been in the league for, what is it, two weeks? Two weeks, one, one and a half weeks. One and a half weeks. Um, yes, he, he's at the top of the lineup. I don't know if he deserves to be there right now. Then again, there's not many guys that do, to be honest with you. So do I think he'll bounce back this year is the question, or do I think it'll take longer than that? I do think, I think, it figures out I, this I, I think he will be hitting above 220 at the end of the year. Is that by any means good? No, that is not by any means good. But will he be hitting above? You know, I think he will have a little bit of a reback. Obviously, you have guys like Mike Trout that actually did go back to AAA. Um, yeah, he did go and back to AAA the, that once. Could be with Kelnick. Yeah, um, he went back to AAA not for an injury or anything, just because he wasn't hitting the ball well. And now you always see what Mike Trout's doing. I'm not trying to compare Mike Trout to Jared Kelnick, but um, I do think we, you we got to give him some slack. He's He's a yeah. really, really young guy. Um, you know, COVID happened. He hasn't really played many live games. And I think uh, we just got to give him some time. Jared Kelnick, um, how many times do you think we'll see him back at Rainier Stadium? Um, I don't want to put a number on it. I do think we will see him back at Rainier Stadium at some point. Um, I, I think it'll be. Just because I will say this. Whether or not he gets sent down, with our luck, he'll be here in rehab because it seems like every gun on our team is getting injured. So he might just get injured for a couple of weeks, come here for a couple of rehab games, and be right back in the house. Yeah. But I think there's good – well, you know, there's two ways to look at it because for our team, we really only have four guys who are major league worthy when you look at it. I mean, besides Crawford, Lewis, Seager, Hanager. Hanager would be on a starting lineup. Everybody else is either hurt or gone. But Hanager, Crawford, uh, Seager would be on Seager. a starting lineup. I don't even know if Crawford would be on a starting lineup. First, half the teams he would be. He's a I he's guess. an average he's a league average shortstop. Yeah. And then you've got uh, obviously. And then you have Kyle some pitchers. Lewis. You have some Kyle pitchers Lewis that too. as well. But the, the, I mean, Kyle at that point, nobody else on our team really deserves to be in an MLB no. roster. So why no. not let Kelnick play? I think I know Ty he's France young, would make a roster. Ty Friel. Oh yeah. Well, I'm t- I'm leaving out the injured guys. Yeah, yeah, France yeah. would. Evan White could because of his defense. I think he'd be a backup. And Dylan yeah. would be a fine utility guy. But I think Evan White also yeah. we could see Tom back Murphy, in AAA. Tom Murphy also could be a potential. You don't think we see Evan White back in AAA some I think we should, but I don't think we will. Really? Because who else can play first base for us? I mean, we just DFA'd playing playing first base right now. <laughs> guys, we want to know in the comments, should we just send all of our young guys down to AAA because they suck, or should we keep them in the majors and hope they improve? Yeah, I think there's a benefit to both. My, uh, my pros and cons list is pro- they get to like have some confidence back in AAA. They get to the feel mm-hmm. how it is to hit a ball again, like which what is nice. Um, and then a con, though, is I think there is some value to being able to get some experience against MLB pitchers. Um, and the other con is that they're going to be better, at least more potential, than the guys we have now. Yes, Walton, correct. Mayfield, Campbell, Nottingham, Godoy. Walton's pretty young, though, right? He's like 26. So he still has, I mean. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that's this I mean, the, even Dylan Moore. Yeah. Dylan Moore stuff sucks. Really right well. before we end this, pitching staff, how do you feel? I feel good about our pitching staff. Um, Flexen, he's kind of starting to cool off a bit, but I think he's still he'll be good for the yeah. year. We are losing tonight versus the Padres. Yeah. Um, what's the score? I, four I, one when I checked. The Padres got four off of Flexen in the first inning. We might be doing a post game, so check out yeah. that. We're also going to be doing a. Um, you know, a short, so under a minute long, just prediction of who we think is going to win the NBA champion uh, or the, you know, the um, the playoffs because that is starting very, very soon. Uh, my quick thoughts is um, Marco's still hurt, correct? He is. He, he should be. He's been throwing again, though, so hopefully okay. he'll be back soon. So my, my thoughts is without the injuries, um, without Marco being down, I think we'd have, you know, a really, really good pitching staff. It's kind of weird because I feel like last year was like, or two years ago, opposite. or yeah, it was kind of opposite. Um, and then we have guys like Kendall Graveman, who's been just dominant. I, I don't even know what his ERA is. It's it's low. It, it's I think low. it's be, uh, below one. Yeah. I, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think it's below one. So that's but unfortunately, great. outside of him, all of our other relievers are either injured or have COVID. I do not trust Montero at all. Montero stinks. Montero, yeah, I don't trust him. Like, he literally, we went when I went to my first Mariner game this season... You, you put in Montero in, like, the fifth inning. We're winning 3-0, and he gives up a run, mm-hmm. gives up one. He only gets one out, and on top of that, he get, he gets in a bases loaded jam, and then we give it to Kendall Graveman, and he gets out of the inning, and zero more runs allowed, and that's pretty yeah. much saves the game right there. Final score was 4-2, uh, to two, so, you know, if he gave up a double there, you know, it's a tie game, and just, I don't know, I just don't trust Montero at all. Um, Neither do I. But then again, 
I would rather Montero struggle than Kelnick struggle. So. We did get Kane and Middleton back today. That'll be a good. Yes, like yes, pitcher. yeah. He was hurt for he was hurt for a good yeah. couple of weeks, and he was good before that too. So. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. This is the NB Sportscast. Rainier Stadium behind us. I'll give you guys a quick view of this really quickly. How relays at the plate. You know because of the country song. There it is, guys. Rainier Stadium. So this is us from Rainier Stadium. See you guys later. And uh, peace out, guys. Bye.